Welcome to Using Your Graphing Calculator in Math 140. I'm Fred Feldman. Thanks for watching. In this video, we'll learn how to find the intersection of two functions. Here's the steps, and I'll walk you through them. The first step is to display the graphs of the two functions. The intersection you're trying to find must be visible in the viewing window. Then go to the Calculate menu, choose number 5, Intersect, and position the cursor and I'll show you how to do that. Let's start by opening the calculator up. I'm at the home screen. You can see the blinking cursor in the upper left hand corner and hit F1 function key 1, the Y equals button. That's where you enter the equations and I've already done that. Let's say in our case X, the input variable, represents the number of units a company manufactures and let's say the cost function c of x is 800 plus 12x the revenue function r of x is 30x plus 440 and when the cost is equal to the revenue the company breaks even and that's our job is to find the break-even point you can do it by hand using paper and pencil or using technology such as the graphing calculator which we will do once the equations are entered we need to display the graphs and as I mentioned the intersection point has to be seen in the viewing window. I don't know what viewing window I used last, so I usually start with the standard viewing window. I'll hit zoom F3 and choose number 6. Oops, <laughs> nothing shows. I think I know why. Let's take a look at the two equations again. You can see that when x is 0, the cost function is 800. So when the input 0, the output's 800, and it just goes up from there. So I know we've got to go way up higher than 10 on the x-axis, don't we? So I need to change the viewing window. It makes no sense for x to be negative, so I'll let x min be 0, and go up to, I don't know how far I have to go, but I'll take a guess at 100. And instead of 100 tick marks, let's make a tick mark every 10 units. I usually pick 1 tenth of the max so that there's no more than 10 tick marks, otherwise it looks pretty cluttered. It also makes no sense for the Y min to be anything less than zero, and the Y max, as I mentioned, needs to be one or two thousand. Why don't we start with twelve thousand as a guess and go from there? You know how I've told you before that finding the right viewing window is a trial and error guess and check technique. So always feel free to fool around with your viewing window. So let's see how that looks. Excellent. I can spot the intersection, but I've gone way out too far on the x-axis and way up too high on the y-axis, so I, maybe I'll change that. Maybe instead of 100, let's go to 40 or 50, something like that. And on the y-axis, I don't have to go all the way up to 2,000, so maybe let's try 1,500. And let's see how that looks. Excellent. I like that much better. Again, your, your viewing window may vary, but as I mentioned in the earlier video, all the mathematics is still the same. To find the intersection, I've got to guide the calculator there because there might be more than one. So let's hit second F4 and go to the calculate menu and choose number five, intersection. Now the calculator is asking you to position the cursor on the first curve somewhere near the point of intersection. So you're going to need to use the left and the right arrow keys to do that and then hit enter. Now position the cursor on the second curve near the point of intersection, just anywhere near it, doesn't have to be exactly on it, and hit enter. And again, position the cursor somewhere near where you guess the point of intersection is, and hit enter. And there we go. You can see when the company produces 20 units, the cost is $1,040, and so is the revenue. 
the company breaks even. So there it is. We could have done this by hand using paper and pencil. Because it comes out so nice and even, I think it'd be pretty easy to do. If I scroll down here, uh, there it is, I did do it earlier. So you can see I set the cost function equal to the revenue function and used algebra to solve for x. Circled it in red and again the answer we got on paper and pencil is 20 units so it matches what we got using the graphing calculator. That's a great idea by the way to do it two different ways and make sure you get the same answer. Okay, so I hope that helps. Thanks very much for watching and let me know if you have any questions.